but you guys have all contracted into this system of bankruptcy and now you're bankrupt and now you're you're operating a bankrupted government that's uh doesn't understand liberty and freedom and and you know when people come and try to find out what's going on you know via email or whatever there's no accountability i mean you get lost in a hopeless uh system of bureaucracy and you know that's not right you know our leaders you know every i've called i've made a lot of phone calls to government and every time I get, well, I can't, I'm not at liberty to speak. I'm not at liberty. I'm not, a, I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. All of you guys are simply following orders to receive a paycheck to take care of your families. You, had, you know nothing about the law. Nothing. And, and you guys, you know, when we become homeless... Are you a lawyer, Mr. Well, you know, I don't know what is your definition of a lawyer. Is is your definition of a lawyer someone who works for the bar, the state controlled association? Oh, yeah, I mean, a, yeah, sure. Yeah. A lawyer is somebody who goes to law school and is licensed by the state no. to practice law. No, I'm not, I haven't been indoctrinated by by any state agency. I'm a free man, just like our forefathers. You know, King George sent uh, people over to enforce laws on the colonies and the men came back to King George and said, man, we can't enforce any of your laws. They're all lawyers over there. You know, the colonies were buying up law books. They were, they were figuring out, uh, you know, the system and they were understanding, you know, they were operating under a fraudulent money system like the one we have today. And the colonies knew that, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin said, Probably the prime cause for the revolution is that King George III would not allow the colonies to an honest money system. So, you know, they were forcing us to use their debt money rather than honest money, which does not have interest tacked onto it, which is the very system that we have today. And uh, John Adams said, all perplexity, distress, and confusion which arise in America are not from defects in the Constitution or Confederation, but in a downright ignorance of the nature of coin and its circulation. He said, clear up the money problem, and all seemingly unrelated problems will simply vanish. Sir, I'm telling you, if we were on the gold standard and you guys were actually uh, obeying the principles of the Constitution, you would not exist. Because this is what fiat currency funds. It, it, you know, it's borrowed money. And Thomas Jefferson said, if I could add one amendment to the Constitution, it would be to keep the government from borrowing. I would depend upon this alone to keep the government within the confines of the Constitution. You see, borrowing always takes people out of bounds. Because borrowing is a, being a servant to the lender. And Americans, every American who signs a Social Security card is a servant to the Federal Reserve. And even Ronald Reagan said, the president is, I mean, nobody, uh, how did he say that? Um, the Federal Reserve is held accountable to no one, not even the president. And even Clinton said, when you find yourself the leader of a nation, you find you can have virtual presidents, virtual prime ministers, virtual everything. You find out someone else is making the decisions. And Napoleon said, when a country relies upon bankers for their money, it is they that rule the government and not the government. You know, I may have got a few words out of context or you know, out of proportion there, but you know, mainly the whole thing is, is that the Federal Reserve uh, gives us our money and we pay them tribute through the federal income tax and, and lazy people pay tribute. We have to understand our money system, sir. and and you guys are operating under that money system that is violating the American people who love liberty and freedom. Okay. And, and you know, I mean, that's a fact. That's not my opinion. That's a well-studied out, well-researched uh, conclusion that I have come to. And, and I love God and I love the Bible and God's the one that told me this. God is the one that get revealed this truth to me. And you guys are operating out of bounds. And you know... Okay, so, what, so what should we do then? Well first of all we have to go to a gold standard. 
so that when we run out of money, we don't throw our children into the fire of debt, which is what we're doing now. When we run out of gold, then we have to wait till we get more gold. I mean, that's just the way life is. You have to live within your means. That's the problem with this government. You know, when, when I was laid off from three jobs in 2008, um, I chose not to borrow and beg from anybody. So I ended up in the street. And you wanna know what my government did? They arrested me twice. They, they're the ones that made me homeless by not listening to our forefathers and then they arrested me for it. So that is when I had to, you know, I could live within my means. How come I can live within my means but the government can't? Am I more righteous than the ones that are governing me? You know, you know, I mean, no, everybody's afraid of what's going to happen if they don't borrow money. And the, the reason why this system's a fraud is because we borrow uh, using our children. Because when in 33, when we ended up bankrupt because we ran out of gold, we, we gave it all to the bankers. Then we decided, hey, you know, our children will generate income. So let's use them as collateral so we can continue to borrow from the Federal Reserve. So they created the birth certificate and the Social Security card. It's a scam. It's like a pickpocket. They say, oh, we're going to give you social insurance. We're going to take care of the of the, you know, the elderly and we're going to take care of you. But in the other essence, we're given their fiat currency power. We're given Wall Street the power to take us through all of these wars. You know, which our men don't really want to fight. I mean, look at them. They don't know what they're doing. There's, they have no purpose. They want to get an education, you know, that's offered to them by the bankers that control this country to fight for their agendas. You know, Saddam Hussein didn't want, didn't want to use the dollar. You know, he was getting tired of the Rockefellers and the, and the Rothschilds and their money system. And so was Gaddafi. He was trying to teach the nations over there to go to a gold standard. Now, Iran doesn't have a uh, dollar-controlled money system. Neither does North Korea. All of those nations over there have one thing in common. They're not under the control of the Federal Reserve Bank, which controls our nation. They use. That's why Kissinger said, military men are animals used as pawns in foreign policy. Because that's what you guys are. You guys are pawns for the international bankers. They use you. They use our military. They use the ignorance of this country. And we have to go back to a gold standard. That was the very reason why they put that into law. But they also gave us a right to contract. So all of America contract with the birth certificate and the social security card which allows this legal system, not a lawful, not common law, but a legal system of international commerce to rule over our country where we are a commodity. We're simply uh, slaves generating income for this fiat currency money system. And look what, it's, look what it's doing to our country. Look at the kind of leaders we have. Nobody's accountable to nothing. You know, Alex Jones and his men have been emailing you for months, or not you, maybe this other entity, but I mean, I get it all the time. You know, I, I don't even waste my time sending an email. If I can't talk to someone on the phone, I don't even waste my time because it's just, it's frivolous. I mean, isn't there anybody in govern that, government that knows a damn thing? You know, I call my local congressman and, and I got a, a girl by the name of Brittany and she goes, oh, I can pass your concerns on to the congressman. I can pass your concerns on to the congressman. Do you know how hopeless that is? You can imagine. That is hopeless, I mean, man. I there's, it's very frustrating. There's no hope. And I can't talk to him. I ask him a sim simple question. What is Cory Gardner's stance on the fiat currency? And he goes, oh, well, I don't know. I guess you're going to have to call him. I call him, no response back. Then I call Dan back again. And he goes, well, that's something that 
that, uh, you know, is not discussed. And I go, okay, well, do you ever talk to him? And he goes, yeah, I talk to him all the time. I go, well, ask him, what, is he for fiat currency or against it? Oh, well, that's not our normal procedure. Oh, come on, man. I mean, it's simple. I mean, Ron Paul you know, knows it. He's against the fiat currency, and he's not ashamed to talk about it. Everybody knows where Ron Paul stands, but all these other politicians, why is it so hard to get the truth? You know, I've been working with my local city, trying to find the truth, trying to reason with them, just like our forefathers did with England. I try to reason with my government. You know, okay, so your law says that persons have to obey your law, but a person is a face mask, and even your own law says that the word person is applied to men, women, and children, and apply means to make a formal request. So, so I rescinded my, my contracts. So how is it that you guys are saying that I'm a person? I'm a man. I'm not some created entity. And they go, well, person in the English language just means anybody. And I'm like, okay, well, that's common sense. But what about a corporation? How can they be a person? That ain't common sense. You guys want to speak English and common sense, but then a corporation is a person? So yeah, I'm confused here. What are you guys saying? What is this system, this legal system that you're using that operates under codes and statutes and regulations? Codes, code words, you know, words have different meanings. It's designed for trickery. Yeah, I know this is hard to digest and I'm sorry for going into this area, but it's very important stuff. Clearly, yeah. And what, I, I understand. And what's your name again, sir? I really appreciate your... Your name your... is Bob McElroy. What is it? Bob. Bob? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Bob, I do appreciate your kindness, and, and uh, you know, I don't get a lot of people who actually listen. Um, I did get another guy. I was trying to figure out what happened to Ruby Ridge, because, you know, I have certain views that the government obviously does not like, it's that I don't want to prop up their fiat currency. I want to live by the Constitution and the gold standard. And, I, you know, there was one sheriff, I believe he was a sheriff over there in Idaho that spoke with me, and I really appreciated that. You know, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you, Bob, for taking your time and, and uh, speaking with me. I'm going to have to talk to you. Yeah, um, you know, so you guys let those uh, men go then? So, so what were they? Talk to them and let them go. Okay. Well, they what was? Their video. So what was their um, violation? I mean, why would you even be concerned? I mean, if somebody was yeah. had a camera and was walking around, I mean, why would that even be a threat? Well, it, it, it goes back to what I said. We have certain security protocols, and we just right. try to okay. we, we try to do our best to, to protect the, the security of the people here and the yeah. installation. I mean, that's one of our responsibilities. And all right. Um, like to know when there's there's press on here yeah because um you know we we often you know if you watch those videos the, he raised a lot of questions and if he had come to me or if they had come to the you know to somebody else we could have answered those questions and and then you would have had, had the information out there instead of speculation because sometimes speculation is wrong and yeah. and my job exists to help the press um come onto the post and help them get whatever photos or whatever video or interviews they want and uh, we're not trying to hide anything okay and, uh, well if they had uh, contacted me and said we'd like to come on but see here's the problem because that training area comes under a different commander right um, they have their own separate public affairs office right. so if, if the press wants to, to visit it they should um you know, and, and this is what I talked to Alex Jones is uh, someone from his office uh, in early February, I think. And I, you know, I took their call and I said, okay, uh, we'll be happy to help you, but you have to call this other agency. It's called the Asymmetric Warfare Group. And I gave them uh, their contact, uh, their their public affairs office contact information, email, and telephone number, and then passed it on to her and um, and told her that you know these people had called. And, and I left it at that because again it's her area of responsibility mm -hmm. and uh, unless she needed help I wasn't going to get involved 
and, right. and the problem was apparently that um, you know Alex Jones and, and his office uh, called and repeatedly asked for requests um, they didn't get any answers so they decided to take matters into their own hands right. and, and which the result was you know, what happened yesterday well I don't see nothing wrong with that well, I mean you know I mean you know, this is home of the brave. It's not home of the stand alert and wait for somebody to, to attack you. It's not that home. This is the home well, of the you brave know, you, here. You agree that people have a right to be safe and secure in their home? Well, we're, the, we're home of the brave. I mean, this is, you know, there's families who live okay. here. There are people who work here every day, and, they have a, and we have a right to protect right. them. We have a responsibility to protect them. Yeah. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. You well, think anybody should be allowed to? Hey, what if if the game was wide open and, and somebody drove in with a truck bomb and killed a bunch of kids? Would that be uh, a cost of freedom? No. What would make you think that something like that would happen? No. Did anybody think that somebody would fly planes into the World Trade Centers? Well, there um, there's a or, lady. Or that Timothy McVeigh would blow a bunch of women and kids in Oklahoma City. Well, did you? I mean, nobody thought that stuff. Yeah. Well, it was the CIA had knowledge of that before it even happened. So well, they, you know, you know and... Again, because of things like that, you know, the government has said that we need to protect these installations, and so we have procedures in place. These two gentlemen yesterday didn't follow the procedures, and that's why they were detained. They were have never you? arrested. They weren't, All right. they weren't handcuffed. They weren't treated poorly. They were escorted to our police station. And, um, um, have you yeah, ever heard of... Uh, have you ever heard of Susan um, Lindauer? I don't know how to spell her last name. Uh, no. Yeah, she was a CIA whistleblower. She was uh, she was involved right before 9/11 with the CIA, and and uh, you know one thing to point out is that uh, Hitler bombed his own Reichstag. I don't know if I said that correctly. His own, you no. know, to bring in uh, control. Yeah, they burned it down. Yeah, and um, you know, James Madison said, "If tyranny and oppression, which is Homeland Security and the Patriot Act, ever come to this land, it will be in the guise of fighting a foreign enemy." And our forefathers.